Applying a regular dose of fertiliser to your lawn is one of the key steps to keeping it looking healthy and green. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Scots Lawn Spreader. You can see from the lawn, it's looking pretty good this time of year. However, I can start to tell in some spots the spring fertiliser that I put down is starting to wear off and it's time for another dose. In this video I'm going to be taking you through the Scott's Lawn Spreader which is something that I've been using to apply my granular fertiliser to the lawn with pretty good results. There is another reason why I'm applying fertiliser to my lawn and this is what the lawn looks like to everybody else a couple of little spotches and this is what it looks like to me yeah so so we've got some patches and we've got some disease i think it's time to take a look at this spreader and get some fur down i'm going to be unboxing the easy green scots lawn care spreader it's a rotary spreader ideal for larger gardens normal spreading width 1.8 meters and on off trigger for accurate applications. I've been meaning to pick up a uh, new spreader for a while because I was previously spreading using the four in one built in hand spreaders. But as I started to sort of get more into lawn care, I was trying to apply different types of products. And I really wanted to invest in a variable type of spreader to give me that flexibility and control for my applications. <laughs> got an instruction manual which we'll come to later it's actually got some pretty good advice in terms of the different types of uh, patterns that you want to take a look at when using the spreader and the spreader actually came fully assembled so there's no real assembly work to be done which is a real plus so we can just take it out of the bag and pretty much start using it the first thing you've got to do is tighten up the main handle these sort of locking wing nuts at the side uh, tighten up and fix the handle in place. I was quite impressed with how these were put together. It's almost on like a captivated ratchet type of system and they lock in really well. It doesn't feel flimsy and they really do the job to quickly tighten things up. The second thing you've got to do is fix the stand to the frame. Again, this is really easy. The stand folds back on itself and just clips into the frame. Measuring up, the width of the spreader is around 30 centimetres, just a little bit over. And the height when it's fully stood up is around 1 metre and 10 centimetres. If you're interested in purchasing a garden spreader to take your DIY lawn care to the next level, all the links for these products are in the description below. It doesn't make it more expensive for you and it helps me support the stream and keep making great videos for you guys. So the next feature on this spreader I want to look at is how to control the application rate. By the lever there's an adjustable ring which you can turn and this ring basically controls how much the aperture at the bottom of the spreader opens and such how much fertilizer gets released onto the spreading mechanism. The spreading mechanism works by agitating the fertilizer, it drops down through the gap and then gets distributed by the disc at the bottom which is controlled by the wheels. So taking a quick look at the user manual, the key piece of information that I got something from in here was about how to apply it depending on what pattern of lawn you've got. If you've got a circular lawn, it suggests to make an edging pass and then up and downwards passes. And if you've got a rectangular lawn, we do two edging passes and then up and down. You can also see a graphic of how you should overlap the passes in between each of the runs to ensure the best coverage. If you're not sure, I always recommend using a lower setting 
and doing multiple passes on the lawn. This is going to give you the best coverage because you're attacking it from multiple different directions and if you reduce the set spreader to the lower setting you're less likely to over apply the fertilizer in one particular spot. Let's take a look at how we can apply different types of fertilizer on the lawn using the spreader. I've got two different types of fertilizer to try out using the spreader to see how it fares with different textures. First up is this fibrous uh, chicken manure fertilizer, which has a texture more similar to almost like a compost compared to a granular fertilizer product. I had been concerned because of this more lighter type of material that it wouldn't travel through the spreader, but it was absolutely fine. One thing to be aware of if you're using a product like this is it needs to be dry as any amount of moisture in the air is going to cause it to sort of stick to the uh, spreading mechanism and stick to the spreader itself, which is going to give you a poor quality application. Okay, so test two is using the granular product. This particular product I'm using at the moment, which is the A1 Lawns uh, Fertilizer. I found it to be really, really good product. It's got uh, traces of iron and uh, seaweed amongst the regular fertilizer. And I find that it gives me really good results in the lawn with a deep green color. I've put a link to this if you're interested in the description below. One of the things that I did by mistake when using this was I pulled the trigger before I started walking. What this can do is create almost like a dumping effect onto the grass, which can cause burn. So a top tip for me is to get a bit of travel on before you start pulling the trigger, just to help it spread a little bit more evenly. When you've sort of got used to the range and the walking speed of the spreader, this is a really, really nice product. It massively speeds up your application time and helps you get a much even finish on your lawn. A second top tip for using this product is when the granular mix gets near the bottom, the spreader doesn't properly agitate all the mix. You can get around this by using a little bit more material than you need, so you'll always get left with a little bit in the bottom to transfer back to the bag. Or you can bump the spreader by sort of jumping it a little bit to agitate the granules yourself. But I generally lead more to overfilling as it will give you a more even finish. The last step of this process, I always like to brush down any of the patio paving flags and uh, wash them down a little bit just in case I've got any of the granules left over from an overthrow as these will stain the patio flags, especially if they contain any extra iron. You can see here some mistakes that I've made in the past. I always start with brushing down and I'm just hosing it off really just to remove some of the other debris that's on the flags. I'm also going to hose down the sprayer to clean it out ready for next time and again I don't really want to be doing this over the flags. Just as a, a bit of an experiment I did one stripe of the fertilizer and left it for about a week and you can see everything to the right of my fingers there has really greened up and gone a lot faster in terms of its growth than everything that hasn't had the, the line of fertilizer in. You can also see there where I'm zooming in now which is where I got that overthrow from starting the spreader from a standing start. So it's really key to get a bit of movement on that and avoid that fertilizer burn you can see there. I'm not sure how well it's shown on camera, but from in real life, you can really see a visual greening of that lawn and the fertilizer has really done its job. If you're interested in the fertilizer or the spreader, I've left links in the description below. And in the meantime, why not check out some of my suggested videos and take your DIY lawn care to the next level. I'll also be doing a follow-up video on how the fertilizer has greened up the rest of the lawn, so if you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell.